What is Pneumology? This is the title of the book and it's a massive subject. It's an ongoing learning for me and for you, for everybody, that the whole of life is based on numbers. But the way we use Pneumology in the Canesson School of Pneumology and the system, Esoteric Pneumology, which I teach, is actually about gazing into numbers or at numbers in order to connect with intuition. And what that means is when, like for example, everyone has a favourite number here probably, or you'll notice certain numbers, like a lot of people saying, oh I keep noticing 11, 11 on the clock, or 5, 5, or whatever. Those numbers are like computers ticking away, they're constantly speaking to our subconscious. So everybody is actually engaging with numbers all the time. And numbers are actually cycles. So you know, mathematicians tend to see numbers in a black and white way, but it's it's the same way as we're seeing them because numerologists see them because they're all cycles, movement, cycles, change, expansion, contraction, numbers one to nine, and then starting again. So, okay, so numbers are invisible. In fact, the whole of physical life is an illusion, really. We're all just little beings of energy or light moving through the cosmos. So that's a quite a broad way of recognizing who we are. But um, each number cycle, one to nine, brings different qualities, different experiences, and it also brings us new potential of using the experiences of from the past of those numbers in a different way, in a better way. And numbers are energy that attract the same vibration of energy. So if we, for example, if you all to go home tonight and look at the, the numbers of the people who are connected with you, your partner, children, your closest friends, you will find a common denominator of a few numbers constantly repeating themselves because those energies will be within you already, therefore like attracts like. So I see um, life as totally like attraction and repulsion, attraction and repulsion, that's all there is, the magnetic field pull, the polarity of the two. And in fact, um, we only ever attract the vibration or the lessons of the numbers that we're working through at that moment in time. So numbers come from the light, everything is pure light, we're made of light, that's the battery within us, and rhythm, rhythm, movement, rhythm, movement. So light is the soul, is the inner motor, and the rhythm is the outer personality. So we have two, we have a receptive element and then an active element. And everything is in perpetual motion of constant change. So how do we apply numerology? We actually can transcribe every letter of the alphabet into a number, and we can actually look at names, and we can look at words, and we can also look at collective dates. But in the esoteric school, we look at collective dates. It gives us so much information. So today's date is the 19th of the 12th, 2019, 2019 adds up to another 12. I'm going to be looking at that in terms of the election in a second. Um, so we see that the 12th, the 19th, which is the day number, is like the personality, it's the rhythm of the day. It's what we're going to attract physically, emotionally, mentally to us today. And when you add up the whole date, for today's date, I think 19, I think it's a 437, 19, 20, yeah, 437. The seven is the inner aspiration for ourselves today. So it's a good day for this talk. I haven't looked at the date, by the way. Seven is introspection, philosophy, psychology, spirituality, truth, trust, finding your own truth. Okay, so there's an inner and outer aspect to each date. And numerology can be applied to a date of birth. It can be applied to names. And when we look at the whole birth chart, we can look at health, career, relationship, compatibility. We can look at the bigger world, at politics, the environment, anything that's happening in the external world. And also we can look at the inner journey of the soul. What's the inner aspiration? What's the deeper message needing to come through that date? So, um, 
numbers also I've been working with large multinationals and small businesses for 26 years and a business is like an individual it, ha it has its own it has its own personality and it has its aspiration what's its inner goals I call that the, the mission statement um, one of the first things I do when I start working with a business is ask them to present me with a mission statement before I even look at how we proceed because without the intent without that light that energy that focus and purpose then things are going to be very confused and not quite materialize so um, yeah so I was looking recently uh, oh yeah so health career relationship and anything whatsoever that's happening in the news it's very helpful to look at the news to see the different numbers and the dates that come up because they keep repeating cycles repeat over and over again so that we learn from them we recognize what that cycle is teaching us and then we move on so uh, I say with a sigh we've just had an election <laughs> and this year is 2019 and 2019 add up, adds up to a 12, 1 and 2 is a 3, so it's a 12, 3 year. And it's the number for the blueprint, it's the trinity, 12, 3. 3 is the number for expansion. And also in terms of earth, fire, air, water and transition, it's actually a fire element. And do we think there's been quite a lot of anger and frustration around in the last year? And three is the number for adaptation. It says, let's adapt and survive or die. It's do or die. We've got to adapt. We've got to change. And adaptation, nature, of course, is very, very highly intelligent. Nature knows how to survive. It's like when they produce flu vaccines every year. By the time they've produced them, somehow those viruses have adapted and changed. And so they can't pinpoint those exact um, inoculations each year. So that is, nature is so clever, it totally knows how to survive. So coming back to the environment, of course, that's also been highlighted in this 12-3 year, which is the number for the blueprint or the plan. We need to set a new blueprint for the future. And <coughs> the environment, once again, we it can adapt, not necessarily with humans on it, or not, <laughs> we don't know. We are intelligent, but nature is highly intelligent and knows how to survive. So yeah, so the election date was quite interesting because of course it was 12th of the 12th. We had a full moon at 12, 12. And when you add up of 2019, it was another 12. So the election date was 12, 12, 12. So 12 on the personality rhythm aspect, 12 that's the mediation aspect, 12 on the inner aspect inner aspiration and then when you add up the whole date it adds up to a 36 three twelves of 36 or nine and we look at um, Boris Johnson's Boris the name Boris is a nine Boris and Corbyn their life paths both are nine and that was a nine day so already they're aligned we're talking about little bubbles of energy of the same vibration what's needed that day we had two very strong leaders with nines. And nine is the number for transition, for transformation, for wisdom. And of course, leaving the EU is a very big transition. So adaptation it is, that's what the year has been about. And it's been a challenging year for lots of people who don't like change. And what we're saying is um, the nine there, the nine day was helping to melt down everybody's beliefs in order to adapt to a new process. So it was all about adaptation. That was a key word for the year. And we're coming to the end of that now. Yes, and then also to point out that 2019 is a number 19. It's called the right use of power. It's power, it's nine is the number for the soul and one is spirit or the light. So we have soul and spirit coming through to guide us through to a new reality. It's what about 2020 then? So what I've done today is actually write down some key words for each month of 2020. I did this a few years ago. It's quite interesting to see what <coughs> happened after. Um, 2020 is a 2020 if you want to look at it like that. And 20 is about giving birth to the soul. 20 is a gestation period where we're all 
in the birth canal giving birth to our wisdom. So again, what kind of birth will it be next year? We'll have to wait and see. And two is to do with cooperation, sharing, collaboration. It's to do with brotherhood. Essentially, 22, if you look at it, a 20, 22, 20 plus a 2, 22. It's a master number. So we have brotherhood, soul, co-working, laying a new foundation of consciousness or for laying a new foundation for the consciousness to come through. So it is a bit like going back to basics next year, going back to the roots, going back to do the groundwork and making sure that each step is laid very, very carefully in order to move us on in the five year that's coming after. And when we talk about balance, of course, we're going to be looking at the environment and um, the economy. How do we keep everything balanced? Um, it's the element of water, so we know that the emotions are water, so that element is highlighted next year. And the higher sensitivity of the soul, as well as the two, is intuition and sensitivity. Two is also the number for separation and, of course, breaking away from the EU, should that definitely go ahead, it looks like it, is, uh, is, 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 is two is always going to separation in order to find unity. There is always duality, there is always polarity. And in fact, our solar system is ray two. It's based on number two or ray two, which is cooperation and brotherhood. Okay, um, so yeah, and then overall it adds up to a four. And four is about structure, structure, discipline, routine, order. It's about, so because of the 20, it's about building relationships, building co cooperation, collaboration. That's already happening between businesses, between countries more, because as the environment steps up, pr produces more problems, we see there's going to need, there's going to need to be more cooperation in order to survive. So in one way, the environment is bringing us very closely together. Okay, so now I've looked at some key words for the next 12 months. And for January, uh, the positive aspect or the aspirational is awakening, awakening. And then the opposite of awakening is humanity refusing to grow up and running away from reality. So we can see as well that technically we're meant to come out of the EU. I mention this because we're filming this in Britain and it's a it's a very strong topic like that. So yes, we're meant to come out of the EU by the end of January, so it's an awakening time. February is alchemy, alchemy. And alchemy is when we take all the elements in, earth, fire, air, water, soul, spirit, everything within ourselves, and we allow that inner transformation to take place within. So it's quite a deep process. And indulgence would be the opposite, is being overindulgent and taking everything in for yourself. So not looking at the deeper process, but what you can achieve on in the outer world. March is fusion. Fusion means spirit and matter coming together and manifesting change, making things happen, instigating things. And that could bring up vulnerability. So bring up vulnerability and fears. Vulnerability is actually strength. All the weaknesses are actually strengths once they're understood and they're used correctly. Vulnerability means you're going to be open to change. Four, April, assimilation, assimilation, so from the process that we've been through, we've been through an awakening, taken that into some kind of melting pot in February, then there's been some manifestation and fusion of the light with matter, and then we assimilate. And what would assimilation do? It could cause a lot of tension as we fight our own personal will with the will of spirit or the will of the divine, to stop that process taking place. So a struggle. May is acceptance, accepting the process, accepting to do the best we can, accepting to be who we are 
and to really revel in that. And the other word, the challenge is discrimination about facts or discrimination. So we have to be very factual. When we deal with facts, it really helps us to accept life because we know where we are, we know where we stand, we know how things are, it is the way it is. So facts are extremely useful. That's in May. In June, we are looking at vision, vision. Now, suddenly, we move up, we see what's lying ahead. So, we have receptivity. Receptivity, lots of people very busy, active. They leave no space in their life, no space to be. And this is about the vision comes from being receptive to intuition, to the light, so that we can see what's coming. So receptivity is needed. July, co-creation. What can we manifest with our friends, our family, with the world, within ourselves, our spirit and our personality, our soul personality? What can we manifest? What can we co-create? The opposite is refusal of responsibilities. Instead of helping to build the plan or the divine plan or your own plans with people in your lives, then there's a refusal to cooperate. August, intelligence. <coughs> so here we are in real life. Intelligence means taking simple decisions that are for the best, the best for all. And we're in real life. There can be some re-evaluation going on in August, but we take the intelligent path. September, renewal, renewal. So we've been through an awakening, an alchemical process, we've fused, we've made something happen, there's been assimilation, we've accepted the process, we've seen the new vision, we're now cooperating with intelligence. Now we can renew, our lives can renew at some level. This can inspire us, it can uplift us, and it can bring in confusion. As there's renewal, and renewal is a letting go of the old energy and a bringing in of the new energy. So there can be temporary confusion. October, quickening, things starting to move. The challenge is avoidance. We want to avoid the wind. Can we avoid the storm? We can step out of the storm, but it's not going to help us grow. So, things quicken up when we face life. November. Choice. Some people say, I don't have any choice. There's always choice. It's just that the choices are not the ones we necessarily want to make. They're the choices we need to make. The thing we need to look at in November are polarities polarities, looking at both sides, looking at both points of view, weighing up and maybe even compromising, but it's about polarities. December, use, use. How much use can we be to the world? How much use can we be to spirit? How can we be used? What are our skills? What are our gifts? Everybody <coughs> has gifts and skills to use, so what is our use? And this is about where we fit in to the greater plan of life. Okay, so this is a poster. Um, I'm a teacher with the Kineson School of Pneumology in Hertfordshire, and we've now been training teachers who are now all around the world. And Claudine Agata is the principal, the founder of the Kineson School, and um, she is was also um, training to be an architect and is a fine artist, and she designed this poster. And I'm just going to read the cycles one to nine because they really sum up the esoteric cycles. We do actually sell this on our website. Um, but anyway, if you can listen to the movement. Okay. So number one says, I blaze inwards to move forward. This is about the concept in action. This is about the vision. And ray one is spiritual will. It's all about the vision. Number two. Two, we weave outward into the space to reflect the inward. It isn't the other way around, okay? So everything happens in the outside world as a result of the inner movement. 
So we weave outward into space to reflect the inward. Action holding it steady in the matrix. Ray two is love and wisdom. Number three. Number three. I become passing away. The action and the matrix are one in the vision. Ray three. Active intelligence. Adaptation. We've been talking about this now with 2019 being adaptation. This is the year that's passing away now. So the year three is the blueprint or the divine plan. Number four, from the vision, we release the light, rendering the foundation responsive to the vision through intuition. So ray four is harmony through conflict, conflict of responsibilities. And it's a bit like Pandora's box, it contains all potential. It's the structure, but it actually is constantly revealing the new structure and the new vision. Number five, here we are, near, coming down there to the bottom. Five, so we've come down into the matter. And five, I explore the lighted vision, revealing its prisms of sound, touch, colour, taste and smells to name life in the reflection. Ray 5 is concrete science. So this is about all change. 5 is at the middle of the process of the numbers 1 to 9. So this is about exploration, experimentation, experience. 6. We hold the reflection. We harmonise our life with a greater life to perceive the beauty of the one love of the grail. So ray six is devotion. Seven, I fuse the true light with the grail to unveil the new forms into the elusive perfection. Six is the number for perfection coming through into the number seven. So we have truth. Ray seven is ritual. Eight, we destroy the old to rebirth the perfect life according to the cosmic soul and will. Re-evaluation, rejuvenation, rebirth, karma. So we have total re-evaluation in the number eight. And finally, number nine completes the cycle here. I synthesize the soul with the inner will to serve my fellow men in love with the one. Wisdom, transition, transformation. So everything goes on that journey constantly from one to nine. So how did the numbers get given their value, their original qualities? Well, it's through, for example, in China, they looked at cycles for five, six thousand years before they wrote the I Ching. And every single culture has studied cycles because what you're talking about is cycles. And cycles will constantly reveal, no matter what system you use or what culture you're working with around the world, there will always be key essence to those numbers. So, for example, a number one is always going to be movement, force, forward, ch change, leadership. Two is always going to be feeling your way along, balancing. But basically, in the esoteric school, the numbers we are more receptive to the soul qualities of those numbers, the hidden, the hidden inner qualities. But they're the same as with tarot, with astrology, all cycles, cycles are at the foundation of every system and they are the same, same essence. That's a very interesting question. Are there any times in life when your name can actually conflict with your lessons here or your soul path? Okay, so a lot of people change their names and that's a common reason why people call for a reading um, because they feel there's been some inner change or some outer change but your your birth name's always going to be intrinsically the biggest influence on your entire life so um, so if you change your name or your people call you by a nickname those names will also synchronistically help you fulfill the karma of your original birth name but you can't really go away from that original karma. However, changing a name can give you maybe a quality of confidence or 
per your perception that you could communicate better or you think you're going to be more successful, certainly numbers um, can all influence you in a very powerful way. But um, I think the only way, because to answer your question about would they take you off the path, was um, some people have changed their names, not mm -hmm. with numerology that I know, but I've seen things on television where they've changed their names and things start to go wrong and they don't feel comfortable and then suddenly after a few months they change it back. So, But the way I look at that is that person's attracted that experience for a good reason. And even going into it looks like going the wrong way down the path is actually going to empower you to step back on the path. So essentially everything is experience. <laughs> but we can't get away from our birth names. Question. Um, so you're asking, how do the different calendars influence us? Yes? And are we influenced by more than one calendar at a time? And I think you also answered the question <laughs> when, you, um, when, you, uh, when you asked the question. Um, is that each culture has its own calendar? Yes. I mean, like in um, the Mayan or, or Chinese lunar calendar, or the ones, they're, they're different. But... What you'll find is that each culture is working with that particular vibration at that time. But the other thing is that, like language, like um, the English language and the Chinese languages are the, are the most used on the planet, it's the same with calendars. The Western calendar now is predominantly used in the world. So that calendar will have a very powerful influence on our lives and the dates associated with it. However, when some people come for readings, we look at both calendars, but there will always be some kind of denominator, common denominator in them. And I would always say to people, follow the calendar that speaks to you the most. Although, of course, if you're going to get up for work and you're at the wrong time, using another calendar isn't going to be very helpful. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so time, time started relatively recently terms of the universe and us counting and observing dates and times so it's all relative she linked with astrology and um, there's a question about the zero so um, astrology and tarot and numerology are all based on cycles so it's all one but numbers are at the foundation, cycles are at the foundation of those cycles. Planets move around in cycles. Everything is cycles, okay? So everything is linked. Um, in terms of the zero, everything is born out of the zero. The zero is the potential. And um, everything is born out of the nothing or the space. And then it returns to the space or the nothing. So concept is a, a zero is a massive concept to actually understand and to get hold of. Um, but when you find a zero turning up in a birth chart or in a date like the 10th, 20th, 30th, uh, 1970, um, the zero is like a resting point and it puts an emphasis where you can bring a lot of new potential through according to the number that's near it. So if it's a 10, it would be to bring out new potential, new direction with the one, renew purpose or vitality. If it's with a six, it could be more for the community and for service and or for beauty and aesthetics, for culture, etc. So zero, it kind of um, emphasizes what's around it. Yeah, but it's, it's very potent. Do I believe in compatibility, people with the same birth number? Or the uh, same purpose, similar purpose? Yes. Uh, it's too, It's very black and white, so essentially, no. <laughs> no in that um, you, could ha you have to look at the whole birth chart. It's not just based on one number. So you could have two people with completely different, what we call song, the song, the sound of the soul, aspirational, the life path in the chart, and yet the rest of the chart's quite compatible with what they need to do in order to fulfill their life path, and that could work really well. But as a generalization, if you have odd numbers with odd numbers and even numbers with even numbers, that makes for a more easy relationship because there's more understanding. But it doesn't mean you won't have problems or it doesn't mean there won't be difficulties or 
Um, it, there's no such thing as a perfect number for anybody, actually, because we're always changing, we're always adapting. And remember, our soul has brought through wisdom, all wise. We all have our own inner wisdom already. We're born with that. So from that perspective, you have to look at the whole chart when you're looking at compatibility. So, for example, when I'm doing a compatibility, do a lot of work with businesses and recruitment, and they're looking at a certain job role and a job title and who they report to. Then we look at compatibilities. And you can see on, you know, the, the aspiration of the company, how they're going to align to that, see their inner goals, what are their individual goals and how are their goals going to work together, how are their behaviour, the everyday, the behaviours, are they going to be able to work together in a practical sense or are they going to be in different offices for most of the time, you know, etc, etc. Et so there's many different levels, also the timing of when people met and when people come together or those cycles repeating again, that's also very important. So it's a very big subject.